Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall family druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And like most women, Alice is sentimental about the occasion. On the other hand, Phil, like most married men, has been inclined to forget how much the day means to a woman. This year, Alice is making sure that Phil will remember by plotting a little strategy with the children. Now look, girls. When Daddy comes down to breakfast, just remind him that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. This year, I want to make sure he buys me a present. Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it. Now listen... Don't, don't, don't let Daddy know that I mentioned anything to you. Okay, Mommy. Phyllis, we've got to be careful when we talk to Daddy. We mustn't let him know that we're... Uh, hey, where is everybody? Ooh, I'm still asleep. Can't get my eyes open. Good morning, Daddy. Do you know what day tomorrow is? Tomorrow? Take it slow, kids. Let me get used to today first. <laughs> Tomorrow is an important day. It's February the 14th. It is? Already? <laughs> Certainly creeps up on you, don't it? <laughs> then you didn't forget it. Of course not. How could I forget the opening day of National Cheese Week? <laughs> <laughs> it isn't that, Daddy. We'll give you a hint. It's V-A-L-E-N-T-I-N-E day. No. Yes. Are you going to buy Mommy a present? I'm supposed to buy her a present for Groundhog Day? <laughs> I must have spelled it wrong. Daddy, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Val... Oh, of course. I knew it all the time. Ha, <laughs> ha. How could I forget a day like that? Did you buy Mommy a present? Well, well, uh, well, I'm going to. As soon as I have my breakfast, I'm going down and oh, get her... Phil! Phil, they just came! Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> what just came? A dozen nasturtiums. Good, good. Dip them in butter and saute them. I love fish for breakfast. <laughs> Silly, they're flowers. They just arrived, and, and listen to the card that's with them. To my Valentine, with your limpid eyes and turned-up nose, you have the freshness of a rose. Your lovely hair and smile so sweet is a combination that's hard to beat. Signed, guess who? Oh, I think that's a beautiful sentiment. So do I. I wonder who could have sent me them flowers. <laughs> they all stop kidding. The flowers are for me, and you sent them, didn't you? Well, naturally. Natch. <laughs> of course. Who else would send them? Well, Phil, how come you remembered Valentine's Day this year? How could I forget it, little mud? <laughs> you know, honey, I'm lucky to have someone like you to send a Valentine to. You know, a lot of other guys don't have anyone. Like Frankie, 
Now, there's a poor that, guy That who... reminds me, Phil. Frankie called this morning. You know something? I haven't heard from him since, uh, since he lost a job with a band last week. Did he say what he was doing, honey? No, he didn't. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't worried about Remley. He's a very clever guy. Losing his job as a musician will give him a chance to really do bigger things. You know, he's the kind of a guy who will be a big success. I'll get it out. Hey, pal, would you like to buy some shoelaces? <laughs> You selling shoelaces? Also razor blades, violets. <laughs> Genuine imported argyle socks, 15 cents a pair. Remley, what are you doing? Making a living. <laughs> you fired me. I got to do something. You got any scissors you want sharpened or a... <laughs> There's anything you want, I can get it. I don't want anything. How would you like to be number two on a pyramid list? <laughs> Remley, I just got up. I haven't got my eyes open. Will you please cut it out? Let's just keep it quiet for a minute, will you? Going around selling things like this. You don't have to do that. Why, with your brains and talents, you could be what? Well, you could certainly be... <laughs> I'll take two pair of the shoelaces. <laughs> the orange ones. <laughs> Remley, I never thought I'd see the day that you'd be doing this. You're the one who fired me. It's all your fault. You made me what I am. <laughs> I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> What's that for? I sing for pennies, too. <laughs> Look, Remley, I told you that I didn't fire you. The sponsor did. There must have been something you could have done to save my job. I tried to, but the sponsor insisted. He said if I didn't fire you, he'd fire me. He gave you an alternative. Why didn't you take it? <laughs> the least you could have done for your sickly friend. Oh, Frank. I didn't know you were sick. Well, look, kid. If there's anything I can do for you, anything I can give you, just say the word. Everything I got is yours. You... No charity, please. <laughs> All I want is my job back. All I ask for is my birthright. As an American. The chance to make a living. To walk in the sun again. To feel the wind in my hair. <laughs> Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Are you finished, Camille? <laughs> Look, so you lost your job. Why don't you be a man instead of trying to get sympathy from people? I'm not trying to get sympathy from anybody. Can't help it if I'm sickly because I haven't eaten for three days. You haven't what? I haven't eaten. Now for don't three come in here days. telling me oh, that. that at the door? Oh, hello, Frankie. Gad, she looks well fed. <laughs> Buy some violets for the lady, Mister. <laughs> well, give me a few pennies for food. Oh, Frankie, if you're hungry, I'll cook something for you. I can't wait that long. <laughs> Just give me the scraps from the breakfast table. Pay no attention to him, honey. You stay out of this, Curly. Alice, I tell you, I'm starved. Well, I'll get you something to eat right now, and... Oh, I'll see who it is. Flowers for Mrs. Harris. Oh, thank you. Oh, Phil. More flowers, and this time you sent American beauties. I did? <laughs> Honey, you know you did. The card is signed, guess who again? Oh, darling, it's so sweet of you to do this. About the food. Don't mention it, Alice. 
You know, you're a sweetheart, and I, I love to get things for you. About the food. Oh, I'm the luckiest, luckiest girl in the world to have a husband like you. Food. And I'm even luckier to have a wife like you. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 that's hey. so sweet. Well, I love I getting it But for it's so you. sweet. Well, you should have well, it. Well, I... Uh, I, 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 I uh, you make me so happy. London Fontan. <laughs> we do this later? I'm hungry. Remley, will you stop already? Oh, let him talk, Phil. Nothing he says can bother me today. I'm too happy. Flies in the buttermilk, shoo, shoo, shoo. Flies in the buttermilk, shoo, shoo, shoo. Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Skip to Maluma, my darling. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Skip to Maluma, my darling. I'll get another one prettier than you. I'll get another one prettier than you. I'll get another one prettier than you. Skip to Maluma, darling. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Skip to Maluma, my darling. Can't get a red bird, a blue bird will do. Can't get a red bird, a blue bird will do. Can't get a red bird, a blue bird will do. Skip to Maluma, darling. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. Lulu, skip to Maluma. In the sugar bowl, shoe fly shoe. Cows in the cornfield, two by two. Flies in the buttermilk, shoe fly shoe. One old boot and a run down shoe. Lost my partner. Oh, what'll I do? Lost my partner. What'll I do? Lost my partner. What'll I do? Skip to Maloo, my darling. Lulu, skip to Maloo. Lulu, skip to Maloo. Lulu, skip to Maloo. Skip to Maloo. My, my darling. thing. I'm starving and she sings. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Frankie. I'll go get you something to eat right now. And Phil, honey, thanks again for the flowers. That's okay, Ma. That's okay. Hey, Curly, how come you're sending flowers to Alice? What have you been up to that I haven't, but that I've been left out of? Want to do that again? <laughs> Might as well try it once more. We're over anyway. <laughs> You're headed for another network, Clyde. <laughs> have one more go at it. What have you been up to that I've been left out of? I haven't been up to nothing. <laughs> Keep this up, we'll both be headed for another. <laughs> Look, the flowers are for Valentine's Day, but I didn't send them. What's she thanking you for? <laughs> she just thinks I sent them. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Some other guy's sending flowers to my wife, and I'm getting all the credit. I'm getting. I'm getting. Yeah, aren't you? <laughs> Wait a hey, Frankie, now, just a second. We both know that there's not another man in Alice's life, so let's just forget him. Okay, it, huh? okay. Got any idea who the guy can be? <laughs> I keep telling you there's no other man. Hey, wait a minute, I know. What? Hey, Alice is sending the flowers to herself just to make me jealous. Sure. That's a solution, isn't it, Frankie? I still like the other man angle. <laughs> Has more exciting possibilities. Frankie, why should Alice be interested in another guy? Let's be brutally frank, shall we? <laughs> You're starting to show your age. Your eyes aren't as bright as they used to be, your cheeks have lost their color, your complexion is sallow, and you've got a few wrinkles showing. That's irreverent. <laughs> and besides, I haven't changed a bit. My eyes still have the deep blue of two succulent grapes. <laughs> There are apples in my cheeks, and my complexion is that of a peach. <laughs> well, skip to Maloo. 
You still got wrinkles. Them ain't wrinkles. Them are irrigation ditches to water all that fruit. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> he comes up with things like that, and I'm the one that gets fired. Rambler. Let's just... <laughs> Will you do me a favor? Let's just forget about the flowers. I don't know who's sending them, but... Come in! Here you are, bud. Flowers for Mrs. Phil Harris. More flowers? Hey, wait a minute, kid. Come back. I want to find out... More flowers. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Remley, look at this card. Hmm. It's from Guess Who again. Beautiful floral, Pete. One thing about your rival, he ain't cheap. I keep telling you, there's no rival. Bill? Now, what... Who rang the bell? Oh, Phil, more flowers. And it's a plant this time. Why, it's a variegated philodendron. You said it. <laughs> and I'm glad you said it, because I wouldn't touch that kid with a fork. <laughs> Very thoughtful of you to send me all these flowers. That's all right, Alice. Uh, hey, I just had a silly thought. You know, I sent all these flowers, but wouldn't it be funny if, if guess who were some other guy? Oh, nonsense, Phil. Who else could they be from? That's right. That's right. There isn't any other man you know who'd be sending you flowers, is there? No. Unless they're from Johnny, Bruce, Terry, Kenneth, Al, Harold, Andy, Paul, Harry, Walter, George, Sam... Hold it! Manny, Moe, and Jack. <laughs> What'd you do, get hold of an army roll call? <laughs> Who are all those guys? Oh, they're just a few of the boys I went out with before I was married. See you later, Phil. <laughs> that does it, Remley. Yeah? We're going down to the florist shop and find out what guy is sending those flowers. Mm -hmm. I'll find out who's sending them. Alice thinks she's smart, rattling off all them names, Manny, Moe, and Mac. And I wonder what she'd say if I told her about Minnie. Minnie? Well. Watch your blood pressure. It's just a dream I had last night. Last night, I dreamed that I was down in the bottom of the sea, down in that salty water. And I'm in a maiden fair who had a cottage there. It was a little FHA job, but uh, anyway, we had it. She had a tail of a fish for a train, but whoa, oh, now, whoa, how that gal could entertain. And what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in the bottom of the sea. I lost all my troubles in amongst the bubbles, why, she was just as sweet as she could be. And every night when the starfish came out, I hugged and kissed her so, whoa. Oh, what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in her seaweed bungalow, low, down in her seaweed bungalow. Ouch, what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in the bottom of the sea. I lost all my troubles in amongst the bubbles, why, she was just as sweet as she could be. And every night when the starfish came out, I hugged and kissed her so, oh. What a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in her seaweed bungalow, low, down in her seaweed bungalow. And I sing with delight as I spend most the night neat that billowy ocean with you. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so beware. something, Remley? I'm getting madder every minute. If I find the guy who's sending flowers to my wife, I'll... I'll... You'll what, I'll Willie? punch him in the nose, that's what. I'll break every bone in his body. I'll throttle him with my bare hands. Tell me more, you magnificent brute, you... Oh, shut up. <laughs> now, there's the floral shop. Listen. Hey, Curly, look who's about to go in. Julius. Julius? Yeah. Well, there's your solution right there, that little character. 
That's who's doing it. I'll bet he's the guy. He's always calling Alice soulmate. Dream, goodbye, dreamboat. <laughs> I'll fix him. I'll tear him limb from limb. Oh, wait a minute, Curly. Julius is only a kid. He can't be the one who's sending the flowers. He's the wrong guy. Who cares? Can you think of anybody better to tear limb from limb? <laughs> yeah, it might be fun at that. Let's ask him anyway. Wait a minute. I'll take care of that. <laughs> hey, Julius. Well, when did they let you guys out of the snake pit? <laughs> Happy today, huh, kid? Look, you've been sending flowers to my house today? Yeah, I sent a plant, but I guess you didn't get it yet. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it all right. You did? Can't understand it. You can't understand what? How come you didn't break out with poison ivy yet? <laughs> Look, kid, all I want to know is, did you send any flowers to my wife? Well, answer me. Did you? Did you? <laughs> Oh, no? Well, I'll tell you something. We're going to find out right now, and you're going with me. We're going in that floor shop and ask who's been sent up. Come on in. Come on, Julia. All right, stop dragging me, you guys. I'm coming. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. I'd like to ask you something. I'll be with you in a minute. I want to finish waiting on that gentleman there. Is there, uh, is there anything else, sir? No, gladiolas, asters, and roses will be enough. Very well. I'll take them to the back room and arrange them. Uh, by the way, put a card in for me and just say, uh, to my beautiful Valentine and sign it, Guess who? All right. <laughs> Guess who? Did you hear that, Curly? It ain't Julius. Guess who's that guy over there? You mean that big, brawny hunk of a bruiser there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, Frankie, you must be mistaken. Why? Well, he's too big and muscular to be sending flowers to Alice. Let's look for a smaller guy. <laughs> Let's get back to Julius. It's safer. Now, Curly, stop stalling. That big guy must be the one. You said when you found him, you were going to throttle him. Well, go ahead. Start throttling. But, Frankie, I'm trying to tell you he's much bigger than I well, am. don't worry. I'll help you. Yeah. Well? Sure. I'll give you a boost so you can reach his throat. <laughs> Mr. Renley's right. If you're a man, you'll stop picking on little men. Take care of that guy. Go on, ask him if he's the one who sent her flowers to your wife. All right, all right, all right. But let's be careful not to offend the gentleman. <laughs> he may be the wrong person. Uh, pardon me, sir. Yes? Uh, are you sending flowers to somebody? What was that? Yeah, heard him. He said, who are you sending flowers to? <laughs> Bad living. Uh, mister, uh, we just want to know if you're sending flowers to your mother or grandmother, maiden aunt, maybe? It's none of your business, but I'm sending them to my wife. <laughs> See? It's a mistake, fellas. He's sending them to his wife. His wife? A likely story. <laughs> Hey, you, your wife happens to be the woman Curly's in love with. He's in love with my... Oh, a fresh guy. I got a good mind to punch you right in the eye. We like to see it quiet. You know? <laughs> hey, what you're asking for it? Who's asking? Don't let him bulldoze you, Mr. Harris. Stand up to him. It won't be for long. Look, bud, I didn't want any trouble with you. Just apologize for saying you're in love with my wife, and I won't hit you. Why should he apologize? <laughs> That does it! Oh, my eye! Oh, what a shiner. Mm. I've seen better. <laughs> I bet he could improve on it if he tried. Hit him in the other eye, mister. Hey, kid, kid, you better keep out of this before I get real mad. Nobody's gonna say anything about my wife and get away with it. Ah, you wife's a lady! Julia! <laughs> Look, mister, pay no attention to him. He's just saying that. Your wife ain't no lady. She ain't! <laughs> oh. Oh, my other eye. Look at those two black eyes. <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at? What's so funny? You look like a curly-headed raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you stand there, mister. Hit him again. Julia's cut it out now. 
I ran out of eyes. <laughs> Julius, don't be so bloodthirsty. Tell King Kong I don't even know his wife. Tell him it's a mistake. All right, mister, this is all a mistake. Mr. Harris ain't in love with your wife. He ain't? No, but Mr. Remley is. Me <laughs> too. Wait a minute, wait a minute, mister. I wouldn't go out with your wife. I've never seen her. I'm the homie type. It's all a gag. What did you say? He said he wouldn't be seen with your wife because she's a homie old hag. <laughs> I could have sworn I said something else. I ought to slug you too, but I don't dare. Why not? If I ever hit this punk, I'll kill him. Talk is cheap. Prove it. <laughs> what are you, a talent scout for four as long? Look, you guys, I'm warning you. If you ever make another crack about my wife, I'll knock your roof in. Goodbye. You and who else? <laughs> oh, I'm glad that guy's gone. Two black eyes, and I didn't I'm even... I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Harris, but I... Mr. Harris, your mascara's running. <laughs> Don't be a wise florist. I just came in here because somebody's been sending flowers to my wife all day, and I want to find out who the jerk is. Mr. Harris, surely you must know who's sending the flowers? Don't you remember? Remember what? You wanted to be sure you wouldn't forget Valentine's Day, so last year you left a standing order for me to send flowers every hour on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the guy who's been sending all of these flowers is... Yes. Jerky old black-eyed you. <laughs> No, and to think I went through all of this with her, I, I think I'll kill myself. Mr. Harris, don't say that. Don't even think of killing yourself. You don't want me to, Julius? No, I'll get that big guy back to do it. You'll have him mess it up. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, a lady puts our Rexall family druggist on the spot. I'd like to know what brand of drug products you use in your own home. Why, Rexall, naturally. Why, naturally? Well, it's not just because I carry the 2,000 or more quality drug products made by Rexall, if that's what you mean. No, it's because I know how those products are made. For instance, just a moment ago, I sold a customer an eye lotion made by the Rexall Drug Company. Now, I've watched that product go through Rexall's laboratory. I've seen how every single bottle is carefully inspected under a magnifying glass a foot wide, just to make doubly sure that it's absolutely clear and free of any foreign matter. Well, it's an eye-opening example, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes, ma'am. I, I guess you could call it that. And we independent Rexall druggists could give you a lot more such examples, but they all add up to this. Look for the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. That's the only place where you will find Rexall drug products. And you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Alice, do my eyes look awful? Yes, but don't worry, Phil. This beefsteak will help them. Alice, about the food. I'm still hungry. Stop it, will you, Remley? <laughs> Haven't you got any sympathy for me? Don't you care if I... Frankie, stop licking my face. <laughs> Who's licking your face? I'm eating the steak. Oh, This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Included in today's cast were Hal March and Jack Mather. Alice Bay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.